case you're wondering and trying to get it to talk so I can see it on the screen and on this as well. Um, some folks outside the room to submit questions right. using the hashtag solo10 and hash b6. And if I've got to use my machine for whatever reason, I don't seem to be able to pull up text help from the presentation, then um, we could have some issues. Uh, alternatively, we can have the tweet speed up after we've got the, the questions going and we can just read them out. I don't know. Yeah, but I can follow hashtag solo 10, right? Yeah, can you tell on that screen has got hashtag solo 10 on the other Oh, yeah, okay. Right, well, in that case, time is ticking. It's on the front of the bottom of the screen. There is a power light on the bottom left, so the switch is going to be Ah, it's got green. <laughs> ah, yes, success. Mastering technology. Thank you, Shu. Right, um, firstly, thank you very much for, for joining us in, in this session. Um, to invite us along to uh, hopefully entertain you and provoke you for, for the next hour. I blame Martin if not, so just throw things at him rather than just um, So, yeah, it's definitely not my fault. We're, we're going to make a change anyway, because it usually is. Um, the topic for next hour, the health conversation on the social web, laboratory or echo chamber. I'm guessing this must be something which has been on your minds, or you wouldn't be sat here with us this afternoon. Um, what we thought we'd begin by doing is trying to credential ourselves, we might walk out after this. Basically, uh, myself, Andrew Spong, uh, Graham here, uh, Justin and Eric will tell you why we are interested in the health conversation, what's happening within social media, uh, on the social web, um, and basically are interested in this topic. Uh, then we will go through, in a completely participatory way, we're not, we're not gonna sit here looking at this talk for, for an hour, we, we wanna hear what you think rather than you each other things about some of the pros and cons for this, uh, this argument. I've put the slides up on SlideShare. I've also invited folks from some of the health conversations such as HCSM, Healthcare Social Media, HCSM EU, Healthcare Social Media Europe, which I co-founded last August with Cecilia Shuke, who tweets as well as Pharma, um, uh, Sock Farm, and so on, to possibly participate in this. Uh, by throwing in some questions into the Solo 10 feed. Difficulty is I've asked them to hashtag it Solo 10 B6, but it, it, it should probably come from there as well, right? See, that's Solo 10 and not Solo Confi. Who <laughs> hey, knows? Wow. Uh, let's press on. So um, I am just going to switch this onto presentation mode, otherwise I'm going to be fucking out and rotating this. Uh, I think I've basically done one minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm Andrew Spong. I, I created. Her, uh, Co-founded Healthcare Social Media Europe last uh, last year. Uh, it is a converse, It's a, It meets every Friday at noon UK time, 1 p.m. Uh, US time. Uh, you can find us on uh, hcsmeu.wikispaces.com. <coughs> just Google hcsmeu, you'll find us. There's also a Twitter, a Twitter account, of course, uh, twitter.com hcsmeu, which links to the Wikispaces site. That's easier for you. Uh, why did we do it? Effectively, it's an attempt to democratize the health conversation. Uh, who's familiar with the concept of participatory medicine in this room? The rise of the e-patient, yeah? Anyone, yeah, everyone's heard of this. E-patient not being electronic patient, but being empowered patient. So it's an attempt to bring the pharma industry, which is obviously overrepresented, healthcare professionals who are really rather scared because they don't know whether they should be participating or whether they can participate. We're trying to help them find out ways in which they can. And uh, patients, so that's why I'm here. Right, the floor's yours for me. Okay. 
Yeah, in the, some of my spare time I've been involved in patient advocacy work since around about uh, 2001, uh, just prior to that I started using the web in 2000, uh, to essentially uh, share information, uh, connect with patients, clinicians, uh, scientists, and since uh, 2007, STM publishers. Uh, that was the point that I first uh, came across uh, open access, something that I've been, uh, to this day, a very vocal uh, supporter of. A uh, couple of things that are not in the uh, public domain, but uh, with regards to sort of social networking, that kind of stuff, in uh, late 2007, early 2008, the uh, uh, Public Library of Science, uh, PLOS, uh, introduced uh, social networking you know, the buttons and tools uh, onto all of their uh, papers. That was a suggestion that I put forward to them. Thankfully, they ran with that. Uh, last year, uh, Biomed Central added the Mendeley tab uh, to theirs. That was another uh, personal achievement of the But I'm interested in maximising the use of uh, science and health 2.0 tools uh, to help uh, share and build uh, on uh, research that the patient always been in the forefront. My name's Justin Kerr Stevens. It's at J. Kerr Stevens on Twitter. Um, I run my own strategic marketing consultancy. Uh, my primary client is government, particularly central government. Um, so one of those clients happens to be the Department of Health, but I'm not here to speak on their behalf today. Um, I've been mucking around on the web for a number of years. Uh, I quite like the potential that I see in terms of engagement and conversation. I like the fact that uh, it, it appears that the conversation is moving and that we're actually affecting change far more than uh, we used to through a broadcast medium. Uh, I, what other bits and pieces have I done? Um, HMGov News was an aggregated Twitter feed, which to everyone probably means absolutely nothing and is of absolutely no interest. Um, but it was something I developed a number of years ago to demonstrate that just because governments publish in content doesn't actually mean that they're in control of it. Not that I think it had anything to do with it, but about a week later, Downing Street um, was then on Twitter. Uh, so Downing Street, my little site has about 700 followers. Downing Street has something like 2 million, I think. Um, so yeah, basically, um, my motto is learn through doing um, and ask forgiveness later. I seem to find myself asking a lot of forgiveness um, and trying to actually get government to um, engage more, particularly around complicated conversations. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, Eli van der Zijde, I'm all the way from the Netherlands. I uh, know uh, Andrew from, what else, from Twitter. Um, and we've met also at URL in real life, uh, pharma congresses. I started my career, actually my medical biology, uh, but switched pretty fast into a more uh, marketing uh, role in pharma. And uh, I was lucky enough to start my career in the beginning of the, uh, the internet boom, so the mid 90s, and saw already at that time the huge power it can have to have a bi-directional communication channel with your customers or with your patients. and. Um, of course, the bubble came and um, everything went down and then it started now since, let's say, seven years again. Um, within pharma companies, I had different uh, roles. The last one was uh, a uh, global product manager and I utilized uh, new media uh, tools in order to engage and to empower with the, uh, with the, uh, the end user. I started my own company in 2008, uh, Digiredu, where we help companies to understand new media, social media, and to implement it, and that's a very difficult task. Um, the reason why I'm here is that my background is in, is in pharma, and um, I think that pharma, and, and, and as a whole, we should broaden our perspective much more into a health 2.0 discussion, rather than only looking pharma, yeah, for doctors and every patient, and, and in the end, it's the whole 2.0 movement is about empowering communication and whether that, that are the patients itself or the doctors. There are a lot of tools and I think um, if, you have, if you have a health related issue um, there's lots of things that can be improved as far as communication is concerned from all different parties. So is it government or you know, pharma company or whatever. And I, I hope we together we can uh, we'll be able to do something about that. Well thank you very much. You've just redefined your 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in, in short, uh, why, why are we talking about this today? Well, the, the health conversation on the social web, I guess you could say, has been effective in connecting early adopters, at least, of uh, social technologies. But have we gone any further than that? Is the utility of these tools plateauing 
simply because we're not breaking out of the bubble. Uh, I invited you all to look at the Ethan Zuckerman uh, piece on, on YouTube, which I think is, is a great uh, great opportunity for us to focus in on the fact that, yeah, it, it's, it's terrific that we make these connections and we can point out to their geographical diversity, but are they growing fast enough? Are they including uh, enough oppositional voices? Are we getting the full picture? And I think, personally, the answer to that has to be no. So let's consider some points for and against. I I'm going to uh, basically read out a, a, a pro and a con. We'll uh, have our say about it, I guess, and then in invite you all to, to participate on a point-by-point -point basis rather than bringing into the conversation at the end because we'll run out of time because you always do in these things. So the, the first idea, I, I've tried to make these polar opposites, they don't always map, but under the laboratory column here, um, the, the, the pros in other words, yes, these are still early days, and that the health company, it's not surprising people talk about Twitter because they're still interested in Twitter, but I'm sure you're familiar with Clay Shirky and his, his idea that technology only really becomes useful when it becomes boring, when uh, status updating becomes second nature to people, when it's integrated in whatever capacity into the uh, workflows and the environments within which they operate, and you could point to things like they're now being state updating connections directly with uh, LinkedIn, indirectly with Facebook, their plugins. Uh, the fact that a lot of corporate entities use Yammer. Who uses Yammer uh, within their place of work? Anyone heard of Yammer? Yeah, yeah. It's, for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's like a Twitter for an intranet. You have to have right. an email address to allow you to access it, and only then can 